Cryptography is the basic building block of any secure communication, so we need to explore this topic first. So what is cryptography? It comes from two Greek words. The first one is cryptos, which means hidden. And the second one is graphian, which means writing. So basically, we can say that cryptography is the study of hidden writing, or more accurately, the study of methods by which one can communicate securely, even in the presence of adversaries. So there are four basic goals of cryptography, and we are already familiar with some of these things. The first one is confidentiality. So confidentiality just means privacy. So if you have a message A, B, C. So let's say this is Alice and this is Bob. Now Alice needs to guess this message A, B, C to Bob securely, meaning that these messages should not be read once they are being transmitted. So it should be something like star, star, star. And when it gets to Bob, Bob should be able to read it as A, B, C. So that's what confidentiality talks about and that's one of the goals of cryptography. Let's talk about the second one. The second goal is integrity. So integrity just means that this message, so let's take Alice again, just means that the message is not altered once in transit. So this is Bob here again. So once Alice tries to get the message over to Bob, this message should not read as BAC once it gets to Bob. If it reads as BAC, then integrity has been compromised. So that's the second goal of cryptography. Let's look at the third goal. So the third goal of cryptography is authentication. Authentication just means that Bob, when Bob receives a message from Alice, so you say this is Bob, and they have a communication. Bob should have a way of knowing that he's talking to Alice and he's not talking to Eve. So authentication is about identifying a user. That, so just making sure that you are talking to the correct user. So that's the third goal of cryptography. And we'll take the fourth one now. The fourth goal of cryptography is non-repudiation. This just means that if Alice sends a message to Bob, so let's take the message. Alice should not be able to deny that she's the one that sent the message. So ABC can have some form of identity saying it was sent from Alice. So this is what non-repudiation means. It just means that the user who sent that message would not be able to deny at a later date that they are the ones who sent it. So these are the four goals of cryptography. The first two are characteristics of the message. So the first two, which is talking about confidentiality and integrity. So we're talking about confidentiality of the message and integrity of the message. While the last two are characteristics of the user. So the last two are authentication and non-repudiation. So authentication of the user and non-repudiation of the user. Now let's talk about some key terms that we're going to see when dealing with cryptography. And the first one that we're going to talk about is plain text. Now plain text just means the original information that's in its unencrypted form. Original info unencrypted. So we're going to take an example. Let's say the example is CCNA security. Now this is the information that we want to send or this is the information that we want to perform something on. You can see it's readable to you, CCNA security. So it's original information in its unencrypted form. Of course, it doesn't have to be text. It could be an image file. It could be anything. It's just the original information. Now the second term that we talk about is cipher text. So cipher text is the product of encryption on the plain text. Right. So an example could be D, D, O, B, T, F, D, S, J, U, A. 
So this will be like the cipher text. This is the plain text and this is the cipher text. Let's talk about the third thing, which is encryption. So encryption just means converting from plain text. So that's from plain text to cipher text. So it's the process by which you convert plain text to cipher text. That is just hiding of information. Basically, when somebody reads DDOB, TF, they don't understand what it's saying. But everybody understands what CCNA security means. So the fourth term that we're going to deal with is decryption. So as you understand, we've already talked about encryption. So decryption is just the opposite of encryption, which means from cipher text to plain text. So it's just the reverse process. That's basically decoding of information. So we can say encryption is like encoding information. Now five, that's the fifth one is cipher. Now the cipher is the algorithm or algorithms could be more than one that are used for encryption and decryption. We'll see an example of all these things later. And the final one is the key. Now, the fact is that the algorithm, which is your cipher, may not necessarily be secret. So everybody may know what a particular cipher is. A cipher could be substitution. So everybody knows how to substitute. But if they don't know the key, they won't be able to decode your information. So it's the key that actually provides secrecy to your whole cryptographic process. So let's just take one general example. We'll use the CCNA security that we talked about. CCNA security. Cool. So here we have that our plain text, that's the information that we want to encrypt, is CCNA security. Now we say that the cipher that we want to use is substitution. Now you understand what substitution means. Substitution just means replacing one character for another character. Now the key that we want to use, actually let me just be more specific. I'll say substitution of alphabets. Just, just to make the example more complete. And then we'll say the key is move one space forward. So that's basically substitute, for example, let's take A, B, C. So A would be B, B would be C, C would be D. So this is the key. Now everybody knows what the substitution is, substitution of alphabet. You can know what substitution of alphabet is. That's just replacing alphabet with another alphabet. But if you don't know the key, you would find it hard. This is just a very simple example. In most instances, you'll find it almost impossible to decrypt an information that has already been encrypted if you don't know the key. So once we know our key, the encryption process is easy. So encryption, let's just write our CCNA security, CCNA security. So if we're going to substitute and move one space forward, this would be D, this would be D, N would become O, A would become B, S would become T, E would become F, this would be D, V, R, S, I, J, T, U, and Z. So this would be our encrypted information. And then of course the decryption would just be the reverse. So it would just be move one space backward. And so when you see DDOB, you just move CCNA security. Security. Cool. So we've seen everything that we talked about here. We've seen the plain text. We've seen the cipher. We've seen the key. We've seen encryption. And this is our cipher text. And finally, we've seen decryption. So as you notice, it's the key 
that gives the algorithm or the cipher its secrecy. Now the truth is this process seems very simple, substitution. But the fact is many encryption and decryption algorithms are actually based on some form of substitution and another one is transposition. So many encryption algorithms are actually based on substitution and transposition. But of course it's in a more complex form than the basic thing that we've done here. This brings us to the end of this video where we have looked at an introduction to cryptography. We have also seen the four goals of cryptography including authentication, integrity, non-repudiation and confidentiality. We have also looked at some key terms in cryptography like ciphertext, encryption and key. I hope you have found this video informative and I'd like to thank you for watching.